This video and the Fall TV Takeover are brought to you by PayPal, the simple and safe way to spend, send, and receive money. Download the app today. In an age of premium TV, there's no shortage of great new content this season. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shows you can't miss this fall. People do things constipated. Come on, I shot a porno constipated. I ran a 5K marathon constipated. I was in a hot dog eating contest constipated. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the most exciting shows airing in the fall of 2017. We're not limiting ourselves to new shows, so you'll see reboots, revivals, and follow-up seasons in the mix. Do it for your mama's baby. I am my mama's baby. Do it for your fucking kid. God damn it. Number 10, The Mayor. So yeah, it turns out it's super easy to run for local office. Step one, get 200 signatures. Step two, don't be a felon. And I don't go to trials next year. I'm just playing my I love you. You're gonna have to trust us on this one because admittedly, the concept for this show seems a little silly. The Mayor, which is airing on ABC, is a comedy that follows the story of a small-time hip-hop artist who lives in Fort Gray, California. In an effort to spread the word about his music, he decides to run for mayor when election time comes around. My mixtape is getting some crazy love. What's happening? It appears as if Courtney Rose is mayor of Fort Gray. What? What happened? You the mayor. Well, Everything's kicked into high gear, though, when he actually wins. Give this one a shot. We guarantee you will not be disappointed. Come on, we gotta get you some sleep. It might be your last chance for the next four years. Wait, this job is four years? Number nine, Will and Grace. Brad and Angelina announced their divorce the same week my relationship ends? Selfish! More than 10 years after it went off the air, this much-loved NBC sitcom is back with a vengeance. During the 2016 election, the cast reunited to film a short clip in character in order to encourage Americans to vote. She is going to appoint justices to the Supreme Court who are going to ensure your civil rights. Yeah, but I don't like that she wears pants. After the success of that video, rumors of a Will & Grace revival began to swirl, and it was officially announced in January of 2017. All the major cast members are back, and the producers have guaranteed they'll continue to touch on political issues like they did in the original run of the series. What happened to the children you had who grew up and got married to each other? That never happened. Oh, what a relief. Nobody wants to see you two raise kids. Number eight, The Good Place. You, Eleanor Shellstrop, are dead. Cool. This NBC show will be airing its second season this fall, and after the critical and commercial success of the first, we're betting it'll continue to exceed our already high expectations. There's been a big mistake. I'm not supposed to be here. If you missed season one, we won't spoil it for you, but the basic concept is that a woman played by Kristen Bell dies and finds herself in the afterlife. She's sent to what's referred to as the good place, but quickly realizes that she's been placed there by mistake and has to hide her imperfect past. What country am I from? Uh, is it racist if I say Africa? If that concept doesn't sell you, the acting and comedic timing are totally on point. What country am I from again? Sensodyne. That is a brand of toothpaste. Number seven, Mindhunter. It's not easy butchering people. It's hard work. This new Netflix series is perfect for any crime fan, especially those who loved Serial and Making a Murderer. Unlike those titles, though, this one is fictional, and Mindhunter doesn't focus on one particular case, but rather follows a pair of FBI agents who are trying to read into the psyches of serial killers and solve open cases. We travel around the country and teach FBI techniques to cops. The show's based on a book called Mindhunter, inside the FBI's elite serial crime unit, which was co-written by an agent who spent his career in the investigative support unit. How do we get ahead of crazy if we don't know how crazy thinks? Number six, The Deuce. Hey, baby brother. You still betting? Winning. This period drama is set in the New York of the 1970s, before Giuliani cleaned up Times Square and made it the family-friendly place it is today. There's been a change in the law about community standards. What about community standards? Apparently, New York has not. The Deuce, which airs on HBO, looks at the seedy underbelly of this famed locale, delving into the world of drugs, prostitution, and the newly emerging porn industry. The show has an all-star cast, led by James Franco and Maggie Gyllenhaal. 
Only days after the first episode aired, The Deuce was renewed for a second season, and we can guarantee that this will be one of the most talked about new releases of the season. What am I looking at? The future. When do we start? Number 5. Marvel's Runaways Josh Schwartz may be known for his popular teen dramas like The O.C. and Gossip Girl, but this season he's taking a foray into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Runaways will be airing on Hulu as of November 21st, and is based on the comic book series of the same name. Every teenager thinks that their parents are evil, but what if they actually were? Marvel's Runaways is the story of six diverse teenagers who can barely stand each other, but must come together to face a common foe their parents. If you're not familiar with this team of superheroes, they're a group of seemingly disconnected teenagers who decide to rebel against their parents. This isn't a show about simple teen angst, though. Their parents all happen to be supervillains. Number 4. Curb Your Enthusiasm You are devoid of anything that's remotely caring or empathetic. <laughs> Shut up! That is a great compliment. This popular HBO comedy from Seinfeld mastermind Larry David earned itself 38 Emmy nominations during its original run. And after six years, it's back with a ninth season. While the show never technically wrapped, the eighth season aired all the way back in 2011, and since then it has been on a long hiatus. I enjoy the mind of Larry David. Anytime you want to get rid of me as a patient, just say, uh, I've had enough. Oh, dear God. If you didn't watch the earlier seasons, the 2017 release of new episodes is a great excuse to binge them. And you can expect plenty of cringe to go along with that binge, because Larry's as insensitive as it gets. Still, the show's good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. I can't look at this. Two people aren't allowed to be happy? Well, you're allowed to be happy, but not in front of me, so... Number 3. Star Trek Discovery All life is born from chaos. The world doesn't always adhere to logic. For the last decade, Trekkies have had to settle for seeing their favorite sci-fi world portrayed on the big screen in the absence of any Star Trek TV shows being produced. All that's changing in 2017, however, and Star Trek Discovery is poised to please fans both old and new. Change is the essential process of all existence, Commander Burnham. Go! You must challenge your preconceptions, or they most certainly will challenge you. The best part is that this show acts as a prequel to Star Trek The Original Series, taking place about 10 years prior to the events of that show. Great unifiers are few and far between, but they do come. Often such leaders will need a profound cause for their followers to rally around. This means you don't have to have seen every episode, or even a single episode of the Star Trek canon, to be able to follow the storyline of this new CBS show. My people were biologically determined for one purpose alone, to sense the coming of death. I sense it coming now. Number two, The Gifted. You never know, you're a mutant. Help me! What is that? Until it happens the first time. If you can't get enough of the X-Men universe, then this one is for you. Unlike Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Legion, which are connected to their respective cinematic universes, The Gifted strikes out on its own using an alternate timeline plot. Why didn't you tell me? Dad puts people like us in jail. The creators didn't want to be limited by the confines of the stories of the other Marvel properties, so they've given themselves a little more flexibility when it comes to squeezing the story of The Gifted into a specific time period. Early buzz has so far been positive, so even if you have superhero fatigue, this show is worth checking out. This is a burden, yes, but it's also a gift. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. We do know there's a fine tradition of African American. I'm sorry. Oh, that's cool, man. It's just because you're racist. Not like KKK racist, more like well meaning West of the 405 racist. Everything okay in here, sweetie? Get the hell out, Shannon! Your hair looks nice. I said, get out! It's time for you to prove your loyalty, not just to your family, but to all of Mandalore. Number one, Stranger Things. We gotta do this? Let's engage. The runaway hit of 2016 is also expected to take 2017 by storm. Just in time for Halloween, Stranger Things is airing its second season. Hey guys, do you see the...
If you somehow managed to be one of the five people who hasn't seen season one, pause this video and go watch that right now. Done? Okay, great. After the events of the first season, many burning questions were still unanswered, so fans breathed a collective sigh of relief when they heard that they'd get to learn more about the residents of Hawkins, Indiana. Nothing's gonna go back to the way that it was. Better yet, the Duffer brothers have confirmed that their plan is to create a third and fourth season of the show in the years to come. If you're out there, just please, give me a sign. This video and the Fall TV Takeover are brought to you by PayPal, the simple and safe way to spend, send, and receive money. Download the app today.